everybody. This is going to be a quick overview of Ishtal in PBE of TFT 9.5. So Ishtal is a kind of a smaller trait. It's only got three units in. And because of that, it's kind of a little bit weird to throw in, in my opinion, without having something along the lines of a spat or like a very set idea you want to go for. Um, so like in this situation, um, Invoker with Melio and Bastion with Nico, some form of you know Ionia build could make sense, right? Because you see the two Ionias that can um, flex in with that. Could make sense to, to go for that in the long term, but a little bit awkward um, as well. Long uh, for Milo though, Milio, he basically just kicks a ball at them and he does magic damage and stuns uh, the initial target and then it bounces to the closest enemy behind the target and does more damage um, as well as impact damage to adjacent enemies. So Milio is pretty strong actually. There's been a couple of Milio builds that I've seen floating around on PBE. Um, and it, it, they're really kind of interesting, mostly because you can do frontline damage and backline damage and kind of like circular adjacent damage, though I think it's going to be kind of a little bit difficult to always make this work. And I think this is going to kind of come down to what Ishtal um, trait you have. And so we'll get into that here in a bit, the more complicated portion of how it works. Uh, Kiana is going to be one of the rogues now in this set. It replaces Zed specifically. And basically you just deal a ton of physical damage as well as stun the main target for 1.5 seconds and all of the targets for, four, for 0.5 seconds. So I think there's probably going to be a Kiana carry set up um, eventually. I, I could see this being strong. I can see this being good, especially if you combine it with something along the lines of the Ishtal um, hex bonuses, I could see it being very solid. I don't know if you're going to ever run Rogue 4, but there's definitely going to be like a Rogue 2 setup. Uh, I think if you really got like Kiana with a Noxus emblem and like Noxus 5 or 7 and had Kiana all the way leveled, I think there's probably a good bit of value that is available to you to play her and, and carry with her. But I think it was going to be one of those things where you need to have the right itemization that, or the perfect itemization and the perfect setup to, to kind of make it work, right? Two costs generally are going to be a little bit more tough to carry with unless they have like a broken setup. Think Zed from set nine. You have to have like that like perfect punch in the mouth. Otherwise, you're going to have a tough time actually beating anybody, uh, especially considering she's a one ranger, which means that you kind of have to be careful with where you place them and, and how you position, et cetera. Uh, then the final one for Ishtal is Nico. Uh, Nico is back and a tank again. Uh, Nico takes place of, I actually don't recall who they took out for her, but another Bastion. Uh, basically just going to be another Bastion that does shielding with your AP, but Nico does do actually some pretty good damage as well at three. So I think there's potential with, for Pop Blossom to be a carry option. Though I think it's one of those things that you should probably be a little bit more safe with it than anything. In that you're probably not going to main carry her. She's going to probably be like your secondary item holder. Somebody you just throw stuff on. Um, just for like a little bit of tank, a little bit of damage, somewhere in between. I haven't seen many builds that can truly use Nico as a main carry. Especially because Ishtal and Bastion don't necessarily give them the most power. And if you're not getting a lot of power from your traits, your base stats have to be insane. And they just really aren't that crazy. It's not like she's, you know, going to take over the game at, at two star like Tarek did for a bit in uh, set nine. Uh, but, you know, it kind of is what it is. Uh, I think she's sufficient, but we'll kind of see. I did want to kind of go over the uh, Rise Realm Warp with Ishtal. Basically, you create the, uh, a circle around your target with a thicket of vines after a brief delay, which I don't think it tells you in here. No, I actually don't know if there's a like actual delay that it tells you in game either. Uh, you deal damage, stun the enemies, as well as kind of like knock them up 
the knockup is just basically the stun. And then allies who are wrapped in the, the thicket of vines get armor, magic resist uh, for five seconds. And that's based on the AP. So I'm imagining you could potentially buff that slightly if you had to rise with more value on him. And this is where like Ishtal with um, the right setup can definitely be good for like a portal. Um, and I think honestly, a lot of these are pretty cool. Um, I, I really kind of like the Serpentine River. It's a little interesting, but I still think it's kind of going to be one of those things that people probably won't play these very often. They'll be neat though, nonetheless. Um, and then that's kind of it for the, the units themselves. And so I'll just kind of go over into the list overview here. And then I'll talk about Ishtal's different hex augments. Um, long story short, though, you basically get like a hex similar to Noxcrya um, from Set 9 Portal. That, and you know, like Socialite, etc., where it has little hexes on the board that give different stats. Uh, so one of them is Stone. You empower the champions to become immune to crowd control effects and reduce oncoming damage by 20% for 8 seconds. Um, bonus effect, which is I believe if you have Ishtal 4, um, empowered champions heal 550 on takedown. Ice, the first time each empowered champion is reduced below 30% HP, they get covered by a protective ice layer and become untargetable. They will also heal for 30% of their maximum health over 2 seconds. After getting frozen for the bonus effect, Adjacent enemies take 30% of their max health as magic damage. Electric. First time an enemy takes damage from each empowered champion's ability, they are stunned for two seconds. Uh, and then empowered champions can stun each enemy once every six seconds. Wood. You basically just gain max HP and also gain 20% max health every time. Bonus effect. They basically gain AP and AD every four seconds. Fire, you basically do burn with extra percentage damage with your magic. Um, and then fire also deals 90% of your ability damage and 2% burn with a bonus. Wind, you just gain attack speed. Um, once your bonus effect comes up, you just get uh, this attack speed stacking. And last until end of combat. Um, it's they're they're neat, but I think again it's going to require like a specific setup with a specific Ishtal, and I think it's going to be one of those things that you probably don't want to be playing it majority of the time. It's probably much more often going to be a support or secondary setup that you throw in because you need a little bit more HP on your your tank or you need a little bit more. Um, whatever it may be, a little more damage, some burn effect, so on and so forth. I think it's kind of an interesting trait bot setup, but I think it's worse than Freljord, if you want my honest opinion, because like Freljord kind of covered a similar niche of, um, well, I need to, like, to supplement something as an extra on my board, and um, yeah, I just, I don't really think it's that positive. Um, I haven't found a whole lot of setups that make them work. Uh, the Melio carry was kind of neat as a concept, but I haven't seen it now in a couple, a couple days. Kiana carry, I think could be done given like a correct spat situation. And Nico carry probably won't exist. So that's kind of the trade overview for Ishtal. If you guys have questions, as always, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will catch you guys next time.